Hello everyone, my name is Deepu K. Shashidharan. Today we are going to see how we can build low-code microservices on the cloud with a service mesh using jhipster and istio. So first, let's see what istio is. Istio is a service mesh for distributed application architectures, especially the ones that you might run in Kubernetes. Istio plays extremely nice with Kubernetes, so nice that you might think that it's part of the Kubernetes platform itself. Istio isn't the only service mesh around. We also have platforms like Linkerd and Console, which are also quite popular. So what exactly does a service mesh like Istio do? A service mesh provides features to help with common distributed microservice challenges, like service discovery, routing, load balancing, and so on. Istio specifically provides the following features. Secure service-to-service -service communication over TLS, of course, with the support for identity-based authentication and authorization. Service discovery, so that your microservices can discover each other. Automatic load balancing for the services. Traffic control features like routing, circuit breaking, retries, failovers, and fault injection. A pluggable policy layer that can enforce stuff like access control, rate limiting, A-B testing, traffic splits, quotas, and so on. It also provides automatic metrics, logs, and traces for all traffic within the cluster, from ingress to egress and between ports. Let's take a quick look at Istio internals. The Istio architecture can be classified into two distinct, distinct planes. First one is the data plane. It's made of Envoy proxies deployed as sidecars to our application containers. Envoy is a high-performance, lightweight distributed proxy. It controls all the incoming and outgoing traffic to the container it is attached to. Second is the control plane. It consists of Istio D daemon and takes care of managing and configuring the Envoy proxies to route all traffic. It also enforces policies and collects telemetry. It has components like Pilot for traffic management, Citadel to manage security, and Galley to manage configurations. We can also use uh, tools like Grafana, Prometheus, Kiali, and Zipkin for monitoring and observability as they work well with the telemetry provided by Istio. You can use this or your existing monitoring stack as well. We'll see more about these later. So, Istio takes care of common challenges in the microservice architecture. But you may wonder, what does this have to do with low code? What about the application itself? How can we quickly build microservices, right? And the jhipster. So first, I'm going to brag about how popular jhipster is, since I co-lead the project. jhipster is the most popular rapid application development platform in the Java world. That's another way to say it's an awesome low code platform as in you don't have to write most of the code yourself. See, we do have cool stats and lots of numbers. Uh, if that doesn't convince you that jhistory is the best low-code platform, then the following demo will. So, jhistory can help, uh, help you create uh, simple monolith web applications, complete microservice architectures. It can generate your domain model or entities. It can generate CICD pipelines and deployment configurations for the cloud or containers. There is more. But to cover everything that jhipster can do will be impossible to do within the time I have. Another important thing to note is that unlike many of the other low-code platforms, jhipster doesn't create a black box application with a spaghetti code. It creates production quality code that is better than or as good as what you might write. If you don't believe me, check out the Sonar uh, quality rating for jhipster applications. JHipster is built by developers for developers, hence developer experience is a priority for us while making sure we create code that adheres to best practices in any given technology. And moreover, it's completely open source and free. Okay, enough talk. Let's build a microservice architecture for an e-commerce application. Let's take a, a quick look at the microservice application architecture that we are going to build today. We have the Istio control plane taking care of policy, load balancing, and so on. We also have the Istio ingress gateway that will route all external traffic to our applications. We have four microservices. First is a gateway application created by jhipster that acts as our GUI and authentication layer. The remaining are services that uh, provides APIs you know, to, to be consumed by the gateway. Each of our containers will have an Envoy proxy as a sidecar that is auto-injected. We hook up uh, Grafana, Prometheus, Zipkin, and Kiali to the telemetry provided by Istio so that we have monitoring and observability for our cluster. 
Each microservice also has its own database. Um, uh, the gateway and uh, a product and invoice have a Postgres uh, database, while uh, the notification microservice has a MongoDB database. It's not an overly complex architecture, but it's also not that simple, right? So before we start, we need to create a Kubernetes cluster. I'm using the uh, Google Kubernetes engine today, and I have already created a cluster to save some time. As it takes around 10, 15 minutes, and we only have uh, 30 minutes for the talk. Uh, these are the commands that can be used to create the cluster from the Google Cloud CLI. The num nodes and machine type argument is important as we need a bigger cluster than the default that is created by uh, GKE. So my cluster looks like this. It has four nodes. Next step is to is install Istio on our cluster. I'm using the latest version of Istio, of course. Uh, but first, we need to install Istio CTL CLI on our local machine. So you can um, uh, use these commands to do that. I have already done this. Then we need to use the CLI to install Istio to the GKE cluster itself. So Istio provides a few Helm profiles out of the box. So for demo purposes, I'll obviously use the demo profile. You can choose the production or dev profile uh, based on your needs as well. The command should install Istio and set up everything required on our cluster. Again, I have done this already to save some time. Once installation is complete, we would need to get the ingress gateways external IP as we would need this later, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in, in, in the demo later. Let's also install uh, the Grafana, Prometheus, Kiali and Zipkin add-ons provided by Istio so that we have monitoring and observability. Again, I have done these as well to save some time. Let's see if all of our Istio components are uh, ready and running. So I have I have uh, K dash running here. As you can see, we have uh, all of our components like Grafana, Istio, Egress and Ingress Gateway, Istio D, uh, Kiali, Prometheus and Zipkin running on the Istio uh, system namespace on our GKE cluster. Uh, now that uh, we have all the components running and our Kubernetes cluster is ready to work with Istio, uh, we can move on to the application itself. But first, let's see the jhipster magic in action. Uh, make sure to install jhipster uh, by using the npm uh, install uh, hyphen g generator hyphen jhipster command. I'm using the main branch uh, for the demo as there is a bug fix that is required uh, for the latest version of uh, Istio. Uh, it should be released soon in the next uh, patch release of jhipster. Uh, if you are trying this out before the release, you can check the PR link uh, below uh, and apply the patch as it's a, a simple fix. Uh, basically, you have to apply the patch to your uh, Istio virtual services and Istio uh, gateway uh, configuration. So next step is to download uh, the sample JDL file. Um, so JDL is uh, the jhipster domain language. Uh, you can find the JDL file in this uh, GitHub uh, link as well. You can also refer to the JDL docs on jhipster website to learn more about that. Uh, I don't think I have enough time to go you know, all over uh, uh, JDL and everything. So, I'll, I'll be, uh, so we'll, we'll just uh, take a quick look at the JDL instead. So JDL is pretty straightforward. Here is how an application definition looks like. This is a gateway and notification microservice, for example. You can refer the JDL log, uh, you know, docs for all the parameters that is available for application, but basically these are the important ones that is required to, to configure an application. As you can see, this is the, the first one is the uh, gateway uh, microservice, and the second one is the uh, 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 notification microservice. Uh, they're slightly different as you can see. Entity definitions are uh, straightforward as well and can be defined in the same uh, JDL file. Uh, here are some of the entities in this demo. They're quite JPA-like, uh, if you're familiar with uh, JPA Hibernate. Um, you can define enums, entities, relationships, and additional entity uh, you know, related options like pagination, uh, your, your service type, and you know, so on. Finally, uh, we can also define deployments in, in the JDL. Isn't that neat? That neat? Defining an entire uh, microservice tag in one file. Of course, you can split it into multiple files as well, if you like. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, download uh, our, our JDL. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to run jhipster download. Uh, so this is a sample file that is available in the jhipster JDL samples repo. Uh, so I'm going to download that. So it has been downloaded. I'm going to open VS Code here. Okay, so this is the uh, JDL. Um, we have our uh, store application, which is the gateway. Uh, we have a product microservice, uh, invoice microservice, notification, and all our uh, entities. You know, some entities like uh, customer is the only entity for the store gateway since it is related to the user, uh, which is used for authentication. And all the other entities are distributed across different microservices accordingly. And finally, we have the deployment definition itself. So um, once you have downloaded the sample, you need to update the ingress domain and the Docker repository name fields as those are uh, those don't have a value here and you would have to uh, provide your own values for this. Uh, you would need a DNS for ingress domain. I normally use nip.io for demo as it's free and uh, handy wildcard DNS. But we want that it's not a good idea to use uh, nip.io for non-demo purposes as it could pose a security risk. So make sure to use a proper DNS in a real application. Uh, but for demo, I think it's, it's fine. So I'll use the external IP of the uh, Istio ingress gateway here uh, with the nip.io wildcard DNS and my own Docker repository. So I'm going to provide my own Docker repository here, which is uh, this, and let me get the external IP of the ingress gateway. So our ingress gateway have this as the external IP. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to provide that. So nip.io will automatically route all uh, you know requests coming to that IP to our local host. And that's it. So, uh, so our JDL is kind of ready. So now we can begin to see the jhipster magic in action. We just need to run the jhipster JDL command. Uh, so I'll be running jhipster hipster JDL with the application name hyphen hyphen four. So the fork argument is optional. Uh, it's just to make sure, make uh, everything, uh, all the applications, uh, you know, be generated in parallel because by default JDL uh, will try to generate everything one by one. So that's going to take a bit more time. So I'm going to use the fork option. It's going to take a, 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 a minute to complete as it will create all our applications, run NPM install on the gateway application and generate uh, Kubernetes and Istio manifest for all the applications. It even prints, uh, you know, uh, useful commands at the end, uh, you know, to continue with our deployment. That's neat, right? Normally at this point, I would go through the applications and walk you through uh, generated code, uh, but I don't think I can fit that into the demo today, but feel free to download the JDL uh, that I used here and uh, run jhipster JDL command to see the generated code, which should look quite familiar if you're a Java developer. Uh, so as you can see, it, it created few folders here. Uh, we have the invoice uh, microservice uh, here under the invoice folder. As you can see, it has created everything required for that. Uh, we have notification microservice, product microservice, and the store gateway. We also have a, a, a folder where the Kubernetes configurations would be generated. It hasn't been done yet as the application is still uh, uh, being generated. As you can see, uh, yeah, it has completed. And as you can see, it has printed out you know, further commands required to deploy our application and uh, the Kubernetes folder has been filled with uh, all the manifests that we require. So each of the um, uh, application folders has uh, its uh, deployment manifest, it has its uh, service, it has uh, the database configuration for that particular application, uh, its uh, secrets are uh, defined uh, here, and uh, uh, Istio specifically, it has the destination rule defined, and for the gateway itself, we also have an Istio gateway definition here uh, with its virtual service and everything required for routing. And uh, uh, for the microservices itself, similarly, they, they will have their uh, deployment configuration for the application itself, uh, destination rule from Istio, uh, their database configurations, 
um, service, virtual service and uh, secrets. So um, our applications are kind of ready. Let us uh, build and deploy everything using uh, Gradle and Jib. Jib is a utility for faster uh, Docker builds for Java applications. It's all set up by jhipster, so you don't have to worry about it. So let's uh, go into each app folder and uh, run the uh, build command. So I'm going to cd store and I'm going to run gradle w bootjar hyphen p prod. So we, we want to build it in the production profile using jib and I'm going to push it to uh, an image in my Docker repo. And then I'm going to cd into product gradle w command for the same but uh, make sure to use the correct uh, image name for that and I'm also going to go into invoice and run the same command there And finally, I'm also going to run it for notifications. So CD notifications, Gradle W. So that should uh, build and push all of our uh, applications to docker as you can see the store has already been built and uh, uh, pushed um, the I think invoice is pushed as well so all our uh, you know applications are uh, 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 built and pushed so I'm going to just close these um, close these terminals so uh, the next step would be to play this apply the, uh, the kubernetes uh, uh, config manifest to our uh, cluster so so that because our, our apps are built and pushed to docker right so let's deploy them to our uh, gka cluster um, so jhipster also generates a bash script as you can see here it uh, generates a handy bash script that you can just run to uh, you know uh, apply the file so what it does is it uh, creates a namespace uh, it uh, labels that namespace uh, with Istio uh, injection so that uh, whenever you deploy something to that namespace, Istio uh, sidecars will automatically be injected to those. And then it applies, um, you know, each of the uh, uh, the configurations in each of the application folders. And finally, it applies whatever is in the Istio folder. So that which is, uh, 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 you know, nothing but uh, uh, gateways and virtual services for Grafana, Kiali and Zipkin so that we can access them in our in our uh, application. So I'm going to I'm going to run that Kubernetes and then apply kubectl apply.sh hyphen f is one of the options because you can also use the same script uh, with um, customize if you like to you know use customize to make uh, customizations or with scaffold if you like that so because uh, jhipster also by default you know uh, generates uh, settings required for scaffold and customization as well so you can use that if you prefer that there is also uh, uh, you can also generate helm based uh, uh, configurations with jhipster or k native based configurations with jhipster so uh, the deployments has been pushed so let's um, go back to ports and uh, watch our watch our name uh, jhipster namespace okay um, i mean i'm i'm using uh, k dash uh, to uh, watch for the ports and everything but uh, you could also just use uh, kubectl so as you can see our um, <coughs> services are starting up uh, they are still not ready as um, uh, as you can see um, uh, most of the uh, applications they need to pass two uh, ready checks they are still uh, only one has completed notification is ready uh, we still need to wait for okay invoice is ready we still need to wait for store and uh, the product so that's probably going to take a uh, minute okay our store is ready so i think we can already start looking into the uh, the, the application itself 
So uh, when you deploy uh, using the script, it also prints out all the URLs that would be required. So, uh, okay, now all, all the ports are ready now, uh, except product, I think, but I think that's fine. We can just uh, go ahead and uh, you know, start looking through our application. So let's open our uh, store. So this is our uh, uh, GUI or, or the gateway application. So let's uh, sign in using the default credentials, which is admin, admin. Of course, uh, Chrome would complain about that, but that's fine for a demo. Close. So let's take a look at our entity. So uh, as you can see, this is the default jhipster application. It's a gateway. You uh, have all your administration stuff uh, that you could expect from jhipster, like user management, um, your, your metrics, uh, health, uh, uh, you know, uh, health uh, monitoring, um, your um, configurations uh, from Spring Boot, and your log log uh, management and stuff, and of course your settings, password, and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the entity. So the customer entity is uh, served by the gateway itself, and we also have the product entity, which comes from the product microservice. So, so let's try to create, uh, we need to create a product category first. So let's try to create a product category. Okay, save. As you can see, we have created a category and uh, we can also just create a product using that. Uh, you can you can upload images if you like but uh, I'm, I'm just going to skip that and we have created a uh, category as you can see uh, look at the id here so this is a incremental number because it's a, a jpa based uh, entity but if you go to notification and if you create a entity here mm -hmm. one 051 was the entity we created. If you create a notification, you can see the ID is a uh, ID is quite different uh, as it's a UA UUID because we are running a MongoDB database here. So that's our application, our invoice. Yes, we have our invoice entity, shipment entity from the invoice microservice, of course. So that's uh, the entire microservice application uh, running on Istio. Uh, now let's, uh, so now we have a fully working microservice application with uh, four services and their databases all talking to each other. But a complex microservice stack won't be complete without some monitoring and tracing, right? So let's see what we have for that, right? So we can, so let's um, open the second link, which is, uh, uh, let's, let's look at Zipkin first. So this is a uh, distributed tracing from Zipkin. If you run the query, you'll see all the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, network calls that were uh, that were happening. So you can uh, uh, trace all network calls in your uh, uh, infrastructure. So let's uh, take a look at stuff for invoice, for example. So if you see this, we can clearly see what calls are being happening, what um, what services are being called, and more metadata. So if you have issues and if you require tracing. You can use Zipkin to do that. And uh, next would be uh, Grafana. So the Grafana dashboard is uh, pre-configured uh, uh, with Istio. So let's take a look at uh, some dashboards, service dashboard, for example. Let's take a look at one of our, um, what can we look at? Product maybe? Yeah, so if you look at the service dashboard, you can see uh, data for, uh, data from the Prometheus, uh, provider that is pre-configured because uh, 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 this is all based on pre-configured metrics from Istio through Prometheus. You can also configure your own. Um, there are also other handy dashboards like performance dashboard uh, and uh, what else? Control plane dashboard, your, the mesh dashboard itself and uh, your workload dashboard. So yeah, we have all this. And finally, we also have Kiali. So Kiali uh, is specifically 
so uh, Kiali is used to visualize and troubleshoot the mesh service mesh itself. So there is a lot more that can be done with uh, done around observability with Istio, but that would need a separate session on its own. So that's why I'm I'm just quickly uh, running through this. So with Kiali, you can you can look at the service graph, for example. So last uh, 10 minutes, for example. So this is all the connections that is being made in our uh, application. You can see we have the gateway, which is talking to uh, Zipkin, which is talking to invoice, which is talking to product, it's talking to uh, store, it's talking to Grafana, notification, uh, Kiali and everything. So this is all our network stuff. And you can also see the applications that we have, uh, the configurations and the, the you know, uh, Istio specific stuff that is running on it. You can see the workloads. If you, you can see if there are any issues, uh, there'll be alerts if there are issues and way more. So uh, I hope this uh, demo gave you a taste of what is possible with Istio uh, and, and jhipster. That, and this is all, and, and remember, I did all this in way less than 30 minutes. So imagine what you can do uh, in, in, in uh, you know, if you have, when you have more time. Uh, so if you do try out this uh, demo, make sure to delete the clusters afterwards uh, so that you don't uh, end up with a huge bill. You can simply delete the cluster from Google Cloud Console or using the CLI. So finally, we have the questions. Is a service mesh worth it? A service mesh provides building blocks to build distributed microservices in a more Kubernetes native way and takes the complexity and responsibility of maintaining those blocks away from you. This means you do not have to worry about maintaining the code or deployments for service discovery tracing and so on. We are moving towards a future where the only code we want to write is business logic and tools and services fill the uh, other aspects of the architecture. And this is evident from the rise of low code platforms and tools like GitHub Copilot and so on. A service mesh also helps in, uh, helps in this regard. This lets you worry only about the application that you are developing rather than the infrastructure and uh, with jhipster, that future is truly here and you just need to worry about writing your business logic. While a service mesh is nice, it's not a silver bullet. Keep in mind that Istio is a complex software and debugging and developing locally may not be as easy as it sounds. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, is the resource requirements. The same microservices without Istio can be deployed to a two node cluster. Whereas uh, with Istio, you need at least three or four node cluster with uh, more uh, CPU and memory. Uh, <clears throat> the Kubernetes manif manifest that I use from the Istio demo profile isn't exactly tuned uh, with the request limits and everything. Uh, but if you tune those, probably you can reduce the overall requirements uh, uh, somewhat. But I don't think you can still get it as low as that is needed for a non-Istio option. So in a real world use case, the advantages of not having to maintain the complex parts of your infra versus having to pay for more resources to run something like Istio might be a decision that has to be taken based on your priorities and goals. That's it folks. Uh, thank you for attending the talk. Uh, if you can learn more about jhipster at these URLs and if you have any follow-up questions, you can reach out to me via Twitter. Thank you.